Mrs. Gandhi always said, let's keep 1967 as the cutoff date. The learned solicitor rightly said, because of the 66 electoral vote. And 67 Mullahs was the election. They did not agree at that point in time. But in 1985, when Rajiv came Mullahs to power, he said, no, we should, they should be give and take. And therefore, this cutoff date was agreed to. And therefore, the 1966 to 1971 period was dealt with separately. And the other period was dealt with separately. That's the genesis. Now, Mullahs, the first submission that my learned friend gave, he gave you population figures, Mullahs. Those figures cannot possibly be relied upon one way or the other because you don't know the genesis of the, of the migration. And even their figures show that after 71, Mullahs, the, 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 the Muslim uh, population has, has been reduced. Therefore, Mullahs, yes, yes. Yes, the rate of growth has been reduced. So the point, the point I'm making is I'm on the first point, Mullahs of the Article 29 point. Well, that has no constitutional basis. But we're not talking about people coming from outside or coming from inside. We're saying that in any event, in terms of 29, you'll have to show infringement. And their infringement is only change of demographics. That's why they show the population figures. Demo change in demographics cannot be the basis of an infringement of Article 29. Cannot ever be. Unless, well, it's very interesting to, in fact, if you ask me, Assam perhaps, is the most multicultural, multilinguistic, the most diverse state perhaps in the country and culture, diverse culture. Mullahs, of the 10 or 11 petitioners that my learned friend pointed out, each of them represents a separate culture. Nobody says that that's been infringed. That's not their case. So it's a very slippery slope to address this issue on the basis of demographic change. Because this is the march of history. You can't stop this. And at that point in time, Parliament said, why should we stop it? These are our own people. For those who Muslims who left India and went to Pakistan and they wanted to return India, there was a whole different process that's included in, 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 in Section 5 and 6, 5 and 6, in Article 6. Whole different process. Because we did not want them back. Here we were welcoming them because they, these are the people of our own ethnicity. So this was a, an act that was recognized by the then government and allowed to happen. But they did not realize the kind of opposition that will emerge as it did in Assam. It happened in other states, but it happened in Assam. So essentially, the Assam Accord was that 71 onwards, yes. everybody, nobody would be protected. Correct. 51 to 66 and 66 to 66, 66 to 71. People who came in would be protected, basically. That's right. 51 to 66, no questions asked. Right. 66 to 71, you got to satisfy the... That's end. correct. Now, if you look at Mullah's really migrations this way, for example, when the Vietnam War took place, kind of the Vietnamese people that were settled, these are all foreigners. You look at the German Mullah's, the, the Turks Mullah's who have now been given citizenship, when the Germany has tweaked its constitution, it's tweaked its constitution, it never allowed this to happen before. So, well, it's Mexicans. There's a special provision of the Mexicans in the U.S. So, the point that I'm making is that's the decision of the political process which allows this to happen and then makes a provision for it under the law. And there's no basis for challenging it other than, well, other than the ground that it is discriminatory. But this was a non-discriminatory recognition. Not based on sex, not based on race, not based on caste, not based on religion, not based on it, 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 on no prohibited... Place of residence, yes. Sorry? Based on place of residence. No. You have to be an ordinary resident of Assam. No, no, but that's the test. That's the test, Mullahs. I'm sorry. That is the test. That test was applied between 66 and 71. And your lordship looks at the entry in list one. It's entry 17 of list one. Yes, 17 which is citizenship, naturalization, and aliens. There's no doubt that parliament has a power. There's no doubt about no, it. No, I'm only, 17, not only... Sorry. Entry, in, entry 17 confers and read with 245, Article 245. Two, parliament undoubtedly has a power correct. to legislate. Correct. But they were not discriminating on the basis of residence. They were not discriminating anybody on the basis of residence. They were saying, only if you are resident will you get this through the process of naturalization. So then, under no prohibited category. And well, there's another very interesting feature as far as Assam is concerned. Assam has five hill areas, scheduled areas, that were created. And they are autonomous councils, Malats. 
A lot of the minorities millers never went to those scheduled areas. You can't buy land there. So they remained where they are. So the Muslim population percentage showed it had increased. So all these are very complex issues. Brothers. How is this court going to determine all this and come to a conclusion that this is violative of 29? There's a, a place called Darang Malats. Darang was, a part of Darang was created as a tribal area. Brothers. So the Muslim population only stayed in the other part. Brothers, so that if you took Darang in its original state, brothers, the Muslim population would be less. But when the tribal area was considered, the Muslim population would be more. The point that I'm making is there are no judicial standards to determine all this. It will be a hazardous task, judicial task, for you to come to a constitutional conclusion that because of this, their cultural rights under 29. Because 29 is preservation of rights. Preservation of rights assumes that there is a violation and because of which I have a constitutional entitlement to say, issue a writ of prohibition, issue a mandamus, not, not to allow them to violate. That's nobody's case. And it is therefore not solely attributable to migration. So that's, Malaz, that's on the 29th. Now, it's absolutely tenuous connection, as my learned attorney says. Absolutely tenuous connection. One has nothing to do with the other. Very, very, very. Now, let's kindly come to now the Article 14 argument. That's even more interesting. Now, I'll assume, Malaz, that 6A is struck down. Now, if 6A is struck down, what happens? Bangladesh will not take them. As we said, this will result in a group of stateless citizens. Total, total stateless. The joint communique, which was issued by uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, Correct. the then Prime Minister, Correct. clearly says that Bangladesh will take back people who had come in after 25th That's of March 1970. That's correct. That's so, so Malas, you cannot, as a matter of constitutional law, Malas, and uh, again, if you go... So, you will have people in India yes. who have been otherwise recognized as foreigners by the Foreigners' Tribunal's order, who cannot be granted Indian citizenship, yes. and yet who cannot be deported, though they are aliens. That's correct. And if you go to my submission, well, just give me power of judicial review. I've dealt with it in two, three minutes. I'll just finish on this, this aspect. Kindly come alerts to volume two. In fact, may I tell you lots of another thing. While this agitation was taking place in Assam, many of the people, whether Bengalis or others, moved out of Assam because they were fearing that they might be killed or hurt. Many families actually migrated to other states. So, in fact, the migration to some of the other states, Malaj, is also attributable to what the uncertainty that prevailed in the state of Assam from 1978 right till uh, 85. And then, Malaj, as your Lordship knows, Meghalaya, Mizoram, and others. So, th therefore, the Muslims would, would, the minorities would not have gone to Mizoram, Meghalaya, and other places, Malaj. So, it seemed that the population here increased in terms of percentages. So these are all very difficult aspects, Mullahs, to analyze and come to a judicial verdict. This takes, and then Mullahs, somebody else in West Bengal and other state can say, you give me the same rights, but they cannot say, now you, 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 you declare this uh, as, as uh, illegal and therefore, uh, where will they go? And Mullahs, the, the commitment to fence Bangladesh was made in 1985 uh, itself. So, 15 years and 23 years, 38 years have passed. The fencing has not happened. Should have happened. And this creates more problems for India, as your Lordship said. Because after 1971, what will happen? Children would have been born here. Can your Lordship imagine the, the, the enormity of the problem? Those children born here would seek protection of three. Where will they go? So that's, I don't want to enter into that. It's another, uh, another area altogether. So that and takes care. Equally, there is substance in this grievance that on the one hand, we don't have an open border. Yes. We do not say that everybody, anybody from Bangladesh can come and settle down wherever they want to yes, in, yes, in, in yes. India. At the same time, if we don't take action Correct. to curb illegal uh, migration, then it causes all these problems in India. The feeling in India that, look, the, the infrastructure is limited. Absolutely. Education is limited. Absolutely. Our public hospitals are limited. Yeah. We can't allow for an unlimited influx. Absolutely. No, no, you're right. And this is the problem. That's Therefore, we passed that order, which we did this afternoon. It's the, what are you doing today? It's the executive that is to blame, Alerts. There's no doubt about it. And right, right from 85. And we, we create problems for ourselves. And then what happens is, Alerts, it becomes the other versus us. 
This is the pro this is the heart of the problem. It is no longer a cultural issue. It's a political issue. Others versus us. Who gets power? Why do you give them electoral rights? This is the problem. Don't give them the right to vote. So therefore, you in the process are creating divisions in society, whereas your preamble talks about fraternity. Now, what is fraternity, Millard? Live and let live is Article 21. Be and let be is secularism. That's what it is. And that's fraternity. And the entire argument on the other side is countering the concept of fraternity in the preamble. So, Sibyl, how do you, I mean, we just, it's, uh, this is not a question in the sense to tell you that you're wrong on this point, but just a little assistance. How do we sort of conceptualize subsection 2 of section 6A and subsection 3? All right. Subsection 2 deals with people who are in the electoral role as on 1 1 1966. Right, right. They're all. Post 91, 1951 people, right. but who are in the electoral role as of 1166. Right. That's why uh, subsection 2 refers to the electoral role of 1166, 66 electoral role. Right. Right. The subsection 3 covers people who are not in the electoral role of 1966. Correct. They came in later until 71. Correct. So, what was the reason for protecting those whom they protected first in subsection 2? Was it that parliament wanted to protect people who are now they have come on the electoral roll as on 1166. So we say, all right, you have now been assimilated. We have already, whether you are legal, illegal, we sort of uh, make a blanket conferment of citizenship. What was the, what, why these two bifurcations into subsection 2 and subsection I will try and answer that, Mother. There are two reasons for it. Number one, even those whose names were in the electoral roll, people objected to them. People objected to them saying they are actually, they got themselves into the electoral role. They did not come here prior to 1966. That's why the whole NRC exercise has taken place. And the end of the NRC exercise, do you know what the result is? Your Lordship asked that question, they should have told you the answer. The answer is today there are 19.06 lakh people who are left out of the and whose appeals are pending. That's all. And the majority of them are Hindus. So it's not as if nothing happened after 71. This exercise has been done and done in eight years, Maharaj. Maharaj, that's why Justice Gogoi said, everybody will have to produce the legacy uh, tree. 